participants with about a 15 minute presentation about healthy fats throughout the year. When Barbara and I began this topic. We thought we don't want to put guilt into the holiday eating picture because holiday eating should be so enjoyable. Um, but generally the, the nutrient that follows us around for days and days after having a lot of it is fat. <coughs> so we're thinking of ways to remember what healthy fats are and how to incorporate those healthy fats throughout the year, not just being cautious through the holidays. And we love fat. We love fat because it gives every meal that we eat more satiety. That means it will empty the stomach more slowly, allowing us to have a better sense of feeling full and satisfied. It also enhances what's called mouthfeel. That means that when you have, let's say, a salad that you're munching on, you really are in the moment of being a little uh, pink nose rabbit. But if that salad has some sort of a smooth dressing, it's just much more flavorful and comfortable in your mouth. Um, it improves the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, such as beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin K. And although you can absorb those nutrients without pres fat present, it's enhanced with fat present. And then fats are also the cooking ingredients that we rely on. They're found both in plant foods and in animal foods. And I'm gonna first give you a quick definition of fat. Oh, oh here, one more thing, we need fat. Um, because it's a cooking ingredient, it keeps, it's, distributes heat and allows for foods to cook faster and more thoroughly. And the kinds of fats that we're very accustomed to in our diets are the oils of vegetable oil, soybean oil, canola oil, olive oil. Then there's rendered fats like the fat, chicken fat is rendered. <coughs> Lard can be rendered, soot or the fat of beef. Um, I knew a woman who used to render the fat of lamb and use it as a moisturizer because she had Sjogren's, which if you know is a autoimmune disease in which the skin can be very dry. And she had the most luxurious skin I've ever touched. Um, okay, what else about fat that we need it for? Well, it's important with blending and spreading and topping. So when we use oils and margarine and butter, um, mayonnaise, these are things that hold our food together. And of course, coating and dipping. So now we're gonna talk about what is fat and then we'll talk about how to enjoy fats, healthy fats throughout the season. So this is something that is a reminder from a presentation that I did for this group back in September. <coughs> fats are made of what are called fatty acids. So when someone says, saturated fat is bad for you it's it's a generalization and that not all saturated fats are known to have, ha have a negative effect on your cholesterol and there are more than 300 different fatty acids so there are three structures of fatty acids that we should know about the ones called saturated which i put uh, two faces so the unhappy face meaning that some saturated fats are associated with a higher level of cholesterol, and that can be associated with problems with heart disease. And then the sort of a neutral face and that other saturated fats do not have an association with being adversely affecting our health. Then there's the monounsaturated <coughs> and polyunsaturated. Poly goes into two groups, what they call omega-6 and omega-3. Now the trans fats, although they are naturally occurring, in this, the fat of beef, most of the trans fat that we will meet in our world is the fat that is used to um, make snack crackers and snack chips and um, the kinds of icing and pastries that we see in the, in the, in the supermarket in the snack section. So trans fats are, and also the fat that is in old fashioned margarine. So they're something that is hard and stiff and therefore has a lot of, um, durability, but is not very body friendly. Okay, here's a quick image. This is such what you need on a Wednesday afternoon, of course, it's of the images of saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. And the differences you'll see 
the saturated fat is straight, monounsaturated fat has one bend, and the polyunsaturated fat has two bends because this time it's got two double bonds. All right, saturated fats have no double bonds, they're durable, they're much more resistant to saturated fats are more resistant to the damage that can occur from ultraviolet light. In other words, if you leave saturated fats on a, on a windowsill, on a sunny window, they aren't as likely to get sort of sour or rancid. But if you leave a polyunsaturated fat exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet light, you're going to get a breakdown and the fat will change its smell and also its, its flavor. Okay. Water can also affect fats, but saturated fats are tough. Oxygen can affect fats, but saturated fats are tough. And these are the things that heat, light, water, and air that are damaging to fat. So most of the time, you should try to keep your fats in your refrigerator <clears throat> or at least somewhere cool and dark. Okay. Now, um, so here are some examples of saturated fat found, as you see, in coconut meats, uh, the fat of milk, the fat of cheese. And a lot of times, the, because we use butter in, in ingredients, you'll find saturated fat of butter in um, creams and, and cakes and cheesecakes. So now it's monounsaturated fat. I put a big message here. This is the one we call healthy. We call this one the more body friendly of all the fats. And it's found in lots of different foods. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But especially the fat <clears throat> of nuts and seeds and avocado and olives and olive oil. Now, polyunsaturated fat is, <clears throat> you can distinguish the polyunsaturated fat. <coughs> you can distinguish the different fats, but saturated fat is hard all the time. So if you think of shortening in the can, like Crisco shortening, it's always firm. If you think of butter, even when it's at room temperature, it's still firm. And the fat of beef and lamb is always firm. Whereas the unsaturated fats are usually very liquid at room temperature, but especially mono olive oil will get firm if you refrigerate it. And polyunsaturated fats are liquid almost all the time. So here are some examples. <clears throat> safflower oil, corn oil, sunflower. Mayonnaise is made generally of soybean oil, so that's another example. <clears throat> so the kinds of things we would get like tuna salad sandwich or chips, and you'll see the kind of oil listed in the ingredients on your chips bag. It's many times it's poly unsaturated fat. So remember I said one of the things that can bother unsaturated fats can cause them to be damaged is ultraviolet light and oxygen or air. So remember when your chips come these days, they come in bags that are, that light cannot penetrate. They're in a bag that has a small, a thin lining <coughs> of aluminum and plastic. So that keeps the chips from becoming rancid. Um, they're also packed in an environment that does not allow oxygen so that the fat in the chip will also not go rancid. Um, but they still is the best used before date. Okay, now I've got three charts for you because once again, what's a Wednesday afternoon without a bar graph? This is so that you can see the rough distribution of these kinds of fats. Remember, monounsaturated fat is the one we call healthy or body friendly. Monounsaturated fat here is shown in yellow. <clears throat> so you can see it's in everything, but there's lots of it in canola oil and lots of it in olive oil. Um, pretty good amount in peanut oil, even a pretty good amount in chicken fat or schmaltz. Okay, moving on, because one is not enough. Now we're going to look at another source of, fat, another example of sources of fats, <clears throat> monounsaturated in this case, um, you can see I, there's a message on the screen. Barbara, I'm not sure if you're able to do it. It says the participant has enabled closed captioning. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so 
As you see, monounsaturated fat shown in the light green is very high in olive oil, very high in canola oil, which here is in parentheses because it's called rapeseed oil, and pretty high in the, all the oils that come from nuts and seeds. Um, and if you want to come, I'll come back to this one to compare specifically nuts and seeds and what their fat is. But remember, monounsaturated is the one we call body friendly. That's the blue one. Lots of it in hazelnuts, lots of it in almonds, quite a bit in pecans or pecans, depending on how you pronounce it. Pistachios, peanuts, macadamia, cashews. Okay, moving on. Uh, this question came up when I did this presentation in September, so I thought I would jump on it uh, to just make sure. If someone is buying grapeseed oil, it has a profile very similar to corn oil. And olive oil, the monounsaturated fat is significantly higher than, than the grapeseed oil. Okay, next one. The last of the fat examples I want to kick around is the trans fat. So I said it's found naturally in very small amounts in the fat of beef. But in general, it's a fat that the food industry creates in order to have a very uh, durable fat for long shelf life. And it has been found to be not body friendly. So if I would be able to put one of those big red circles with a line through it across trans fat, that would be the best way to think of it. There is no trans fat that's a good number, always zero. Okay, now I'm going to talk about eight healthy fats or fatty foods that we can include throughout the year. First one is seeds. Um, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, and pine nuts, which are called nuts, but they're really seeds. And these are good because they're good sources of monounsaturated fat. They often have lots of minerals like potassium and calcium. These are also good because they, if anyone has a nut allergy, generally, I cannot say this with absolute um, certainty because everyone's allergy profile might be different, but generally you can enjoy these. And they can go on top of salads, they can go on top of yogurt, they can go on top of cottage cheese, they can go on oatmeal. And if I haven't said it before, my personal opinion is that oatmeal is for livestock, but I eat it every day because it's good for you. And then I go away and I go, ooh, all right. Of the eight very healthy fatty foods, nuts and seeds are the first. The number two are the fatty fish. I suspect you've heard this message over and over, but it can't hurt to put it out here again. Omega-3 fats are very um, beneficial. They are anti-inflammatory. They are associated with better mood, with better cognitive performance, with better brain development in children. Um, the list is long. That could be the one hour talk all to itself. And everyone thinks salmon right off the bat, but it's okay to go for less fancy fish like sardines and mackerel and herring. These are good sources of omega-3. Okay, my third fat to have all year, olives and olive oil. Now, of course, olives are high in salt. Would not push that on anyone who's concerned about their sodium intake, but I just want to emphasize olive oil and olives are still good sources of monounsaturated fat. Number four, avocado. A good source of monounsaturated fat. <clears throat> And the bar graph that we looked at a little earlier that I'm sure you looked at and said, oh no, not another bar graph. We saw avocados also rich in monounsaturated fat. And by the way, the avocado growers um, have their own resource center and you can get all kinds of newsletters and bulletins and recipes and all kinds of good information about olives. If you just want to do a search, but I've also put a, um, a URL at the bottom of the page, CaliforniaAvocadoGrowers.com. What a surprise, that name. Now, a little caution. And that avocado oil, although we know that it's very rich in monounsaturated fat and healthy, it seems as though the integrity of the oil, avocado oil industry is kind of shabby in that a study found that 82%, that's more than three-fourths, three out of four bottles on the shelf of avocado oil was rancid or worse, mixed with other oils. So if I'm going to buy avocado oil, I want it to be 100% and I want it to be good. 
So if you're interested in reading the study, and it's published, um, you know, two years ago, but two and a half years ago, still the information might have been updated since the original publication. It was done at the University of California, Davis, so ucdavis.edu. And once again, if you do a search that says um, avocado oil um, purity, something like that, this article will come up. So I would say, personally, I'm not going to buy avocado oil because even though you can search avocado oil reviews, there'll be lots of different websites that tell you these are the 12 best avocado oils on the market. But if this university found that more than three out of four bottles were not 100% olive oil, uh, avocado oil, my trust has been a little bit shattered. Okay, so we're still talking healthy fats, lean fats, so lean foods. So we're saying lean turkey. By the way, I got this idea from another website done by dietitians. We all are all about beef and, and hamburgers all year long. They're, they're still relatively simple and relatively um, affordable. Uh, if you use whole wheat buns and you incorporate a few more veggies or um, something else in the sandwich, you really can get you know pretty decent nutritional package. Uh, and turkey tends to be a very low fat. In fact, um, America's Test Kitchen was was experimenting with recipes for turkey burgers and they found that actually adding a little bit of baking soda and a tiny bit of soy soy sauce made the burger a little more tender a little more moist and have a little more of a um a hearty taste okay number six coconut now i don't want to say coconut oil because although I mentioned there are 300 different fatty acids and of those, the saturated fats that are associated with elevating cholesterol um, are, not, are only a few of those 300. But coconut oil is about 90% saturated fat. But if you eat coconut as a, as a snack, whether it's uh, bits of fresh coconut, dried coconut, coconut sprinkled on something else, it's a fun food and it isn't an unhealthy food. And remember, we do need fat. Okay, next one. Full fat yogurt, whether Greek style or standard, is a good idea. The, the fat of, of milk does have a lot of saturated fats in it, but remember there are 300 different fatty acids and not all of them are bad. This is a great source of calcium and protein. Um, if it's on sale, it's reasonably affordable and enjoyable and and lends itself to a lot of different things other than just being in a bowl with all those wonderful nuts and seeds uh, sprinkled on top. So number seven, fat, and now number eight, nuts and nut butters. Um, this is an issue, again, if someone does have a nut allergy, most of these might be risky, if not absolutely dangerous, but they are still very nutrient dense with lots of calcium and magnesium, um, potassium, and mono and polyunsaturated fats that are very body friendly. Now that's the story on a summary of different kinds of fats and different sources of fats. Now we said, let's talk about how do you enjoy them throughout the year. So uh, let's start with winter because we're sort of right in the heart of it now. Um, instead of deep frying foods, maybe an air fryer. My sense is I haven't, I don't own one, um, I was, everyone, everyone with a capital E, everyone who owns one loves them and says it, may, it was a game changer. If it makes, if it affords you the opportunity to eat more healthy vegetables and low fat protein foods, then rock it. Another thing that I have found in the winter is that I'll do more baking. Um, so if I have a recipe that calls, let's say for a cup of oil or a cup of butter, in the batter, I find that I can cut it down by about a third and the texture will still be very pleasing. And um, there are, many of you might already know, there are several recipes for olive oil cake. We're so used to butter cake, um, like a yellow cake or a chocolate cake, which is uh, based on usually butter being the fat in the recipe. You can use olive oil, you can use coconut, uh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say canola oil, and that brings you a good tender thing. And when I see 
of myself saying, I feel like a big stew tonight, and I take out my big cast iron um, Dutch oven. Many recipes tell you to brown your meat so that it has more of a savory flavor in butter. But you can also use olive oil or canola oil for that as well. Okay, let's move from winter to spring. And the first thing that comes to spring to mind for me, um, I don't know where my head is, is Cinco de Mayo, which isn't really a holiday in Mexico, but it, you know, it, we make a big deal of it here. So instead of a melted cheese dip for your, your, your um, tortilla chips, why not guacamole? So we get to incorporate that wonderful monounsaturated fat avocado. And if you are one who boils vegetables, and then when the boiled vegetable is, is um, removed from the pot, you might melt a little butter on it. Not that butter is dangerous, but you might even think of keeping the prep simpler and put olive oil on your veggies and roast them, or even olive oil when they come from the pot where they've been steamed. I'm gonna move on from spring to the summer. And here I'm thinking we're outdoors, the weather is warm, um, we're more likely to want to eat a nice cold and refreshing um, salads, uh, dessert, so I've thought, Instead of full fat ice cream, maybe frozen yogurt. It's not that ice cream fat is dangerous, it's that there's a lot of it. And once again, America's Test Kitchen did a review of a uh, comparison of ice creams and they found that the full fat ice creams like Ben and Jerry's, which I love the, their corporate, um, the integrity of their corporate policy. But let's get back to the food, that their ice cream wasn't as tasty as an ice cream that had a lower fat content because the the more air one whips into it the more creamy it will taste in your mouth even though there's more butter fat in the other versions well anyway find the one you enjoy but if you can cut back on some of the fat content of your frozen dessert that's good and then um let's say you're someone who said i can eat a salad but i need the salad needs to really get a little more sassy and so many people love bacon bits on their salad. If you're someone who doesn't eat pork or you don't want to eat the fat of pork, guess what? You can hack that with grape nuts. Now, online, there are many vegan recipes for something giving you the equivalent of bacon bits. Most of them use something called textured vegetable protein. I once uh, for was in an audience with a cardiologist giving a presentation. And he basically, without any numbers, he turned some grape nuts into a bowl. He gave it a, a healthy splash of soy sauce. And of course it can be lower sodium soy sauce and just a dip of liquid smoke. And when that got whipped around and every, each grape nut got coated, because you don't want them soggy. And if I gave you a blindfold and put one just let you it enhances the salad in ways that just you know you deserve to give this one a try now if you think liquid smoke sounds a little scary the product has been reviewed and it isn't related to cancer that you can get from having charbroiled things so keep this one in mind once again without any numbers just dump some dump okay Allow some grape nuts to fall into a bowl. Put a little bit of uh, soy sauce on it and just a dab of liquid smoke. And you've got some of those bacon bit type flavor that will make a summer salad really good. And now we're getting into the fall and we're still talking about healthy fats. So this is where almost all the fats that we've talked about so far, nuts and nut butters, fatty fish, all varieties, not just salmon, the fat of avocado, the fat of olive oil, all of those are good. So think of ourselves as maybe in the fall bag lunches and snacks. Um, I'm for one love to carry a snack with me because when I'm, if I'm in Manhattan and I get the munchies, somehow I don't want to break a $5 bill just for a mouthful of something. And you know how expensive stuff is. So if you have your own blend of nuts and seeds, um, this was supposed to be the word sauteed. And I thought the program would automatically correct it. Yeah, you got it. 
So one of the things that we know people will often do in the fall, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, or all year, is put their food in a skillet with oil and brown it and cook it in that fashion. That's not necessarily bad, but you might be able to get away with a little less fat <clears throat> and then use one of the body friendly fats if you toss them all in oil and then put them in your oven. And you can really roast a combination of vegetables and your protein food all at once. Now I'm going to take the next step because today is the support community for at letting you have a chance to ask questions about anything that you're doing in your, in your kitchen. But I've got a little idea I want to share with you. What if we started a cooking club? And a cooking club means that we are thinking of doing it where it would be <clears throat> the last Friday of the month and it would include topics about ingredients and compare ingredients, topics or in blending in information about kitchen toys. I call them toys. Okay, equipment and utensils, like what's the difference between a chef's knife and a cleaver and whether or not one can do the job of both or whether there really is an advantage of using one over another. <clears throat> how to handle your cutting boards, how to wash them, new recipes or innovations on any old favorites. And of course we should share recipes because there's most likely a favorite recipe that everyone has that brings wonderful memories up. And maybe it's, you know, like we'd say printing press ready, or we could tweak it for some of the ingredients. And I'd like to hear from any of you what you would like to see included if we do a cooking club. <clears throat> And that exactly is my last slide, except for a reference piece for some of the information that I presented earlier in the, the talk. So Barbara, who's our master's miss person of ceremonies, <laughs> will allow us to now have a discussion. And if anyone has a question, please feel free to put it in the chat or if you raise your hand, Barbara will, or I will recognize you. And do you have any questions about kind of fat, quantity of fat that's healthy, ways to incorporate fat from day to day in your different recipes, um, and what you might want to see in a cooking club? Well, apparently you covered everything, Maudine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You know you have questions for Maudine. Put me to work, guys. We paid, yep. for, the, we paid for the band. Let's dance. <laughs> Should we take you off uh, share so we okay. can see everybody if we want to do that? That's okay. Oh, cool. As, as, as needed, I can always run back and um, create, you know, a new page. I can always stop Is recording if you guys feel to... better. Huh? Does anybody think they might try the bacon bits recipe? The brave are among us, but not raising their hands. Okay. And does anybody mind that I'm wearing antlers? <laughs> does anybody notice? Frankly, I see who has <laughs> iPhone. What, yes. What is your name? Because I know you're shaking your head. You're going, no, actually, I'm jealous. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm that auntie who, uh, yeah, I walk into a store with antlers. No shame. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, I know I have a friend of mine who wears a tiara every day. She's got a collection okay. year round. Okay. <laughs> um, can we taste, can we like prepare recipes or um, among the stuff that you discuss and maybe we can start a recipe every Friday? I don't know. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how do we make it work? How do we implement it? So the cooking club is going to be proposed for the last Friday of the month. So it won't be weekly. Um, and I will be on site at RSS from, I. now I'm going to need Barbara to remind me. I think we said one to two, but it could be 11 to 12. Um, sorry, 
got only 17 pages of notes about this. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> right, just a few well, pages. we'll make the bigger announcement uh, in January. So I promise <laughs> uh, you will you will be kept up to date when okay. uh, when it happens. So go ahead. Yeah. Okay. And so there, we'll definitely ask people to contribute recipes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so we're interested yeah. if we have enough people. Um, I think that's part of the plan. If uh... so, iPhone. What's your real name? <laughs> we just need for for uh, attendance. Who me? Yeah, yes. me. Oh, Diana. Diana, what's your last name? Rodriguez. Okay, I'm just going to change it so we have it. Thank you. Thank no, you, Diana. You're welcome. You're welcome. There we go. Now you, you're official. Diana, behind you, <laughs> behind you, is that an image of a cat near your window in the corner? No, that's a mirror of an image of a cat. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. So um, we have uh, in the chat here, um, LJZ has asked if you could show the resource slide again. Oh, sure. Um, uh, just going to close the chat page and do the share. Last time I went to share, you know, it went crazy. So let's hope. <laughs> oh, okay. This is it. And I, the, article, it. the article was um, womenshealthmagazine.com. And it's interviewing nutritionists. And funny thing, I personally knew two of them who they interviewed. Because uh, a lot of times the nutritionists are people who have uh, private practices and they might be an NBC or a CBS like per dietitian who they have on camera twice a month. So they're all New York based and we're, we're a little mafia. So they, some of the suggestions in that they had, I think, 20 suggestions, and I simply took the 20 and condensed them and then added a few of my own and called it eight. So for their 20 ideas, they included sunflower seeds as a separate one and pumpkin seeds as another and chia seeds as another. So I thought all the seeds can go on one slide, and that's, the, that's this slide that you recall, you might recall I used before. Um, I think, there we go. Uh, uh. okay, so on the article, the resource article that you showed, these, when they recommended 20 healthy fats to eat, these were five different ones. So that brought us down to 15 and then I tweaked a few. But if you want that, that reference. Now the other reference was if you wanted to get information about avocado from the avocado growers. Um, they, have in, they have handouts for Sorry. people who have diabetes, what's good stuff to put in there. Let me see if I can get my hands on that again. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Well, this was the, <clears throat> the evaluation of avocado oils. And here's the information, avocadogrowers.com. And when you get to the home page, you can click on Resource Center. I hope that's useful. Okay, did it, that, that answered your question? Okay, anybody else? Did anyone have a favorite recipe they prepared? since the beginning of our holiday season? I've been um, flirting with trying to make a Jamaican black fruit cake. Yeah. I'm very Ooh. intimidated by it. I have, I have a really good recipe that I've looked at a thousand recipes and I think this is the best one. Um, and I'm gonna make it for New Year's. I'm soaking so my fruit as we speak. I thought you had to cook the uh, sort, keep the fruit in a certain sauce or something for a long period of time. Okay, so let's get into that. The um, the orthodox way of doing it is to start your fruit six to eight weeks before the holiday, <clears throat> before you're going to bake. And if you have a big jar like bigger than this, and you fill it with let's say ten ounces of wine or rum. And then you put your dried fruit in it, which includes golden raisins and um, prunes, uh, dark raisins. <clears throat> they will swell up and soak up all the oil, all, all the alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to cheat, you can put it in a crock pot the day before and leave it on the crock pot for 10 hours. And you know what you get? The same amount of salt. <laughs> yeah. But if I told, if I told that to someone who makes really good Jamaican black fruit cakes, I probably would be cursed out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what's the difference between that and the, Jama the Jamaican one and the what you call traditional? Um, the Jamaican one is a <clears throat> um, much, it's more like an old English pudding. Okay. Yeah, barely but takes the, the texture of a cake. It's very moist and very dark and very dense, whereas fruit cake has at least a, a cakey texture around all the different pieces of fruit. Okay. It's, yeah, it gets the name cake, but it's it's a stretch. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. The pudding would be more accurate? More In a way, um, I'm going to cheat for a second, and maybe I can find the website where I got the, the recipe. Um, don't laugh, but it was called My Forking Life. <laughs> my Forking Life. Yeah. I have a feeling they were kind of messing with my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> life. Uh, okay. That's forging. I know. I'm just letting Google clean it up for me. Okay. Take out forging and put in the K like it's supposed to, right? That's what um, I was. Yeah, there you go. Lifeworkinglife.com. There we go. And <clears throat> I found that of all the. Um, different recipes that people put online and they go to you know, they're on YouTube. This one seemed to be the most um, well organized and good photographs and good explanation of thing, how things transition. You know, so you really got to be a good oh, um, Jamaican recipes. Let's just go right there. Well, this one might just be food, not just cake. Um, okay. Let's do this one. If you to permit me one more tweak of the URL. Um, so it's J-A-M-A-I-C-A-N hyphen B-L-A-C-K hyphen C-A-K-E and then there we go. So if anybody wants to take a shot at it, oh, there you go. <laughs> and then compare notes. Yeah. So, so you see the texture is very um, moist. It looks very rich. Yeah, it's it's not it's not crazy rich. It calls for breadcrumbs and flour. Okay, so that's partly. <clears throat> so this this is the final, and so here's your fruit, and here's where the fruit swells up and absorbs all the moisture. See, that's why I said this is a good illust good educational piece that it gives you good expectations as to what yours is going to look like, and then you put all those things in the blender. And then you put all those things. Okay, now my page is going to be slow to open. Oh, that's so also I'm, why it's I'm, richer yeah. because it it's all the fruit is blended as opposed to the other yes. cakes I'm familiar yes. with where it's all the big chunks. Exactly. Okay. And again, the depending on who you do it with, they also can throw in almonds or sometimes almond extract. So thing mm. is, um, so here's your dry ingredients and you mix the wet and it calls for some eggs and that's what your dough <sighs> will look like. And then they use this thing called browning. Um, I think I've gone too fast before the picture's loaded. But anywho, put it in the cake pan. Once you add the browning, it gets dark. And that's the post baking, that's the raw. And so if you're saying what well, my cake didn't rise, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And some people then pour more alcohol on it and let it soak. So as I said, there is a, <clears throat> there's, a there's a proper sequence of doing it. And there's a little bit of cheating in between. So this will be my, <clears throat> my attempt at doing a holiday special product. Okay. Anybody else have any? I'd love to hear about others. <laughs> 